The future of the Battlefield franchise is uncertain, but oddly exciting at the same time. Now, you may be thinking, how can anyone actually be excited about the future of Battlefield with the crazy poor performance and low player retention from the past two major releases? Well, allow me to explain my crazy brain. The recent press release from EA regarding the 20 year anniversary of the franchise gave us some interesting info regarding their plans for the future. Now, we did already know a bunch of this info. We already knew that Marcus Leto was heading a new Battlefield single player studio in Washington. We just now know that the official name of the studio is Ridgeline Games. He's been pinging the community for ideas and information about what people want and sort of the tonal approach to the franchise, basically doing his research. But other than that, we have no clue as to what the nature of that game could be. The other part of the announcement was about Ripple Effect, aka Dice LA, working on an entirely new Battlefield experience that will complement and build upon the series' foundations. Now, the choice of words that they used here is interesting because the series foundation, to me anyway, is conquest, teamwork, maybe World War II, but it's still an entirely new experience that will complement that, so it's hard to know exactly what that means. And if I had to guess, I would say that it's going to be a free-to-play experience. EA is clearly gearing up to battlefield the heck out of us at some point soon, three studios all working on seemingly separate projects, and as always, we can't forget that Call of Duty is a blueprint for success that most major studios use, so they'll probably be looking to do what COD does. Call of Duty has been embracing the free-to-play component of their game with Warzone. Halo Infinite did the free-to-play multiplayer as well, and Battlefield has always been the last to catch on, but nonetheless I can imagine the next wave of Battlefield content will have some sort of free-to-play component. Whether that's a Battle Royale, Extraction Royale, small-scale competitive component, or an entirely new game mode. EA's previous attempts at entering the Royale arena have been disappointing though, and if I know how corporate think works, they're probably chalking it up to Battlefield players just don't want a Royale and not acknowledging their own design failures. I still think that Battlefield 5's Firestorm was one of the better foundations of a Royale experience, and instead of making it free to play and fixing this stuff, they just let it die. But I digress. I could spend all day discussing bad timing and poor design choices from the franchise's past. Now, if I could design the project that Ripple Effect was working on, I would create a dinosaur extraction shooter. I'm actually not joking. Imagine something sort of akin to a Hunt Showdown experience, where the atmospherics, audio, and AI are huge factors in how you navigate around the world. Now fill that world with extremely detailed and intricate dinosaurs on an island map, interesting AI that reacts to sound or some that reacts to movement, aka a T-Rex. Maybe you could hear the T-Rex thundering through the environment, kind of like a boss AI that you had to choose to engage or try and avoid. Your missions could involve scavenging, maybe acquiring DNA, or just simply escaping. Perhaps there's compounds that need to be infiltrated as well. The plot of the game wouldn't be nearly as important as the gameplay itself, needing to sneak, avoid AI, or use the AI to disrupt other players. Tools like scent bombs that could attract dinosaurs to other players and stuff like that. They could further integrate destruction where buildings could be torn apart by dinosaurs trying to hunt you down, and basically all those components components working together and you have an epic royale experience. In my opinion anyway, that's what I'd be doing if I were the head of that studio. Now do I think Ripple Effect is making this game? Unfortunately, no. I doubt they could sell the concept to the executives. They're probably working on a fairly safe clone of some other type of game. Unfortunately, that's how big studios work these days. Less innovation. But then again, who knows? The franchise really needs to swing big with their next titles. They clearly tried with 2042. The concept was epic, but the execution was horrible horribly undercooked. Now what about DICE Stockholm, the team that's currently working on 2042? Well, the 20th anniversary announcement said, and I quote, with the launch of season two, we're proud of the work that we've done on the game and are committed to uh, continuing to support it. And of course, to no one's surprise, there wasn't any concrete language there about how much support and for how long. Everyone's waiting to see if 2042 gets a year two of content support and four more seasons, but most are predicting that all support will be dropped after season four. 
Will Dice Stockholm switch to fully working on the next full feature Battlefield game after this? It's hard to know. Now regarding Dice Stockholm's next game, I was personally hoping that 2042's universe would have gotten fleshed out more. I actually enjoy the dystopian modern slash future combat approach, but due to the reception it's possible and maybe even likely that they feel they need to shift gears entirely for the next game. That being said, I don't think it's time to go back to World War II just yet, and the other historical options are a bit limited and probably won't provide the same scope or excitement that a modern combat game could. So maybe it'll be more of a Battlefield 3 era game, trying to really hit the feels of the fans. Personally, I gotta admit I'm kinda clueless as to what the next title could be, but I would say either continuing the modern dystopian era or going back to BF3 is probably the most safe most likely and I don't know if DICE is going to play it safe or if they're going to do something crazy. The statement also repeated the messaging of building a connected battlefield universe. And what does that mean exactly? Will this single player game that Marcus Leto is working on set up the next battlefield multiplayer experience? Will whatever ripple effect is working on also have a narrative tie-in to the rest of the battlefield content? 2042 showed that despite battlefield not really being a narrative driven franchise, at least having a well-crafted world that feels like it's part of a real conflict actually goes a long way. And when a game doesn't have that, things feel cheap and disjointed, much like 2042. So perhaps a bigger narrative connection would be meaningful for the franchise overall. Currently, there's quite a few moving parts and a lot of new management and clearly a ton of money being thrown at Battlefield. I certainly don't doubt EA's commitment to the franchise. They would be stupid not to treat it as one of their premier IPs, but it's hard to know what that commitment will actually result in. We haven't really seen this many dedicated Battlefield studios working on the franchise before. They have outsourced to other studios for game modes, but that's not quite the same thing. So from that standpoint, it is exciting seeing all of this work being put into Battlefield. Money and effort means potentially big stuff for the future. The scary and somewhat unknown factor is the effects of just how much of that development talent that made up Battlefield's past has left in the recent years and whether or not Battlefield's soul has gone with them. Of course, that might be a bit dramatic. The Battlefield formula isn't a mystery and any competent developer should be able to drop in and figure it out. But as always, things seem simpler until put into practice. Now, if I could pick and choose exactly what the three different studios would do with their time and effort, I would like at least a second year of content commitment from 2042. It seems like, especially after the specialist rework, a smaller team could produce more maps and guns and cosmetics, while the rest of the studio ramps up production on the next title. In fact, I think EA should be creating more support teams that focus on building out content for the current games until the next one is ready to launch. So in this case, creating more 2042 seasons right up until the launch of their next title, in my opinion, would be ideal. And I think it could also be done profitably if they kind of commit to it and let players know that it's going to get long term support and that they can potentially invest their money in cosmetics and other things down the line. And regarding ripple effect, well, ideally, I'd want them to make a free-to-play Dino Royale experience. I think it would be awesome and I need really cool stuff to get me hyped up these days. I am a jaded gamer after all. Now regarding Marcus Leto Studio Ridgeline Games, well, if you're going to make a dedicated Battlefield single player experience, the story really has to slap. I don't want to see any more boilerplate missing nuke plot lines that bore me to death. I want a full scale country invasion, maybe a dystopian future, a modern day civil war plotline. Give me something really cool and crazy. I'd also like to see intense frontline city sieges and to make sure that Battlefield takes advantage of destruction, blazing your own path through open levels. One of my favorite first person shooter campaigns was Crisis. Now the story was extremely stupid and the end levels really looked like they ran out of budget and ideas, but during the meat of the game, the open world world combat and destruction opportunities are still unrivaled in my opinion. Go play Crisis Remastered if you haven't already. Crisis 2 and 3 kind of killed 
all the magic by making the levels way too linear and scripted, but Crisis 1 was where it's at, and it should really be the blueprint for how to make a good Battlefield single player since both franchises really heavily touted their destruction. Of course, that's my opinion anyway. I'm personally not a big fan of Call of Duty campaigns due to the highly scripted sequences, but I know some people like that kind of stuff. So again, this is just my take on things. What do you guys make from all of this new announcement? It's a huge amount of effort and money coming from EA, but we still have no actual info regarding what it's being used for. I'd love to hear your theories in the comments. Also, check out this video I made where I analyze the realistic side of whether or not Battlefield 2042 can make a comeback. It's a fun topic and we're already starting to see if my theories play out with Season 2's launch. And as always, thanks for watching guys. I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.